There's A360 and A360 team. The A360 for individuals, free to anyone. You can sign up. Uh, you get five gigs of storage. You can create a single project where you can upload files or share them with uh, anyone you want to share that with and so forth. And then you have A360 team, which is for businesses where you have a uh, an actual cost to this. So on here, this is based off of the website. You have ten dollars a month per user, and each user gets ten gigabytes of storage and unlimited projects. You can create as many projects as you need, and but then you also have admin controls, where you can um, assign users to be team members, project contributors, um, admin uh, controls. So you can administer your uh, your uh, site for a three sixty team. So what is a three sixty? Uh, so it's a central workspace in the cloud where you can host your projects and your team members can uh, have access to your projects. So the little uh, diagram here we have, we're actually going to demo this, where we go through the whole process of we'll log into our account, we'll create a project, we'll invite people, we can add content to the project, we can view our uh, our uh, files and so forth, we can uh, uh, review um, and manage our content and whatnot in our hub. So uh, when you first start off with A360, you're going to have a hub. Uh, by default, if you do the individual one, which is free, you, you're going to have your own hub. Um, the difference between that one and the team is that the team has the admin hub, and you can be part of multiple hubs. Like I could invite each of you guys that are attending today to my hub, to our uh, Total Cat hub, and I can have you as contributors, and you can see whatever uh, projects I allow you to see and so forth. And when you do this, you will have a list of different hubs that you've been invited to. Uh, that's going to be listed. Uh, I'll show you where this is listed under your uh, your admin, and then you can pick and choose which hub you need to work in, and so forth. So when you're working with a 360 team, you have several users. You have an administrator, you have a team member, which is a paid uh, user, and then you have project contributor. Uh, project contributor is an unpaid user. You can have as many project contributors as you want on your. Uh, on your hub, so I can invite, like I said, every one of you guys in my, uh, to my hub, and you guys would be project contributors. Which here's just a list of the different uh, roles for each of the different members. Um, when you're a team member, and you create your project on on a 360 team, you're the project admin, so you have administrative pro uh, administrative rights to that specific project. You also have a hub administrator, which means I can control all the users in our hub. Um, and then you have the unpaid users, which is project contributors. Those are, like I said, the ones you can invite. Team members can invite project contributors, but then the hub administrator would have to approve a membership for a project contributor. So there's there's where you, some of your admin comes into play. So as you can see, I'll just leave this for a second up here. You can kind of go through and see the different descriptions and your uh, rights for uh, your different uh, uh, users on here. And just to show you, this is like an overview of our team hub, which you'll see live here in a second, where we have, you know, this is TCAT says team hub, or list. Uh, this is your your startup page, which you see once you log in, you'll have your projects you create, you'll have who's it's owned by, um, your different activities. It keeps track of all the activities of, you know, who uploads a file and who downloads and, you know, who's on there and so forth. Uh, so you'll see this live here in a second. We'll create a brand new project from scratch, we'll upload files, and we'll go from there. That being said, these are all the viewable files. There might be some new ones. I haven't updated this recently, but these are the, all the so far the recent files that you can view on A360 Team. So you don't have to have product installed to view like a DWG or a Revit file. You can load, upload the file. You can use your uh, browser as a viewer. You can also send um, links to that specific project. So you can send it to say you have a client who wants to see their model, their project. You can send them a link which will they'll just open up in their project browser and they'll be able to view that specific model. They'll be able to hide objects, you know, navigate through the objects. Um, you have the ability to allow them access to download the file or if it's just view mode, which means they'll just see whatever's in there without the ability to download the actual file. But these, uh, this is the list of all the different files that you can upload in, uh, uh, into A360 team that's uh, acceptable right now. So like I said, this could be longer. I'd have to update this to see if there's any new ones out there. Some of the sets, your list of files there. With that said, let's walk, let's go ahead and jump into an A360 team product demonstration. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get this going. So I'm going to jump over to, I'm going to speak this out. Well, there's my Revit here, but I'm going to go to, I'm actually using Chrome. 
Uh, I found best success using Chrome or Firefox. Um, I haven't really tried it with uh, Edge. I'm using a Windows 10, so I guess Windows Explorer is gone, so there's Edge. Um, so here we have, just if you were to you know, Google search, go to 360.obvious.com, here's your, your, uh, you know, your default uh, page for this. Then up here you have your uh, sign in and uh, you know, sign in or sign up for free. You want to do the, you know you want to trial or you want your individual 8360. I already logged in. Let me see if I just do this. It's probably gonna say I'm already logged in. Yep. There you go. So, so I guess I skipped that whole process of putting my credentials in here. But once I'm logged in, I actually have to open right now. Uh, if I go over here to this is my default individual 8360, my personal one. If I go to where I have my initials over here under GM. See, these are all the different settings um, or different hubs that I uh, have access to or that I've been invited to uh, work on. So down here is our team hub. This is what I'm going to switch over to. But if one thing I want to show you is if you look at this where we have my GM, I initially have profile and you have settings. Since this is my individual, there is no uh, admin controls. But once I jump over to TCAD, Team TCAD uh, Sys Hub over here, same one as this, so I'm going to close that one in the background. So now this is our team hub. This is the uh, one that's you know the the paid version of uh, a 360 team. See now this comes in with profile settings and admin. I have admin controls because I'm an admin for this account. And just to go over this user interface, here's our team hub. Here's all the projects based on our team, which you know just other users besides me. So there's for example here's Lugo. He has a couple projects on here. Uh, you can um, organize this by projects owned by you, projects that are shared with you, any uh, projects that are archived. If you archive a project, uh, you can't delete a project. The only option is you can archive this. If you archive a project, you can always restore that project. You can, or, you can only archive your project. You can't archive someone else's project because they have admin rights over that project. Like if I go to Lubos here, the only option is I can pin this. And that's pretty much it. If I go to a project that's owned by me, so I have the option to unpin, I can archive this, so that I can archive a project if I need to. So to start off with this, these are all my recent, all my active projects right now. These are all, you know, just I've organized this just by me as the owner. I'll create a new project. So this is where you can create as many projects as you need. Each user has 10 gigs of storage. So in this case, as I'm creating this project, it's going to go towards my 10 gigs of storage. So I create a project. You give this project a name, and I'll just call this, uh, we'll make this up for today, 360. Sure, that's what we'll call it. You can add a project purpose to this. It does require you to add an avatar, a little you know, image on here. I guess you can upload your own if you want. I'll just pick one of these defaults and I'll create a new project. First thing you're going to do once this creates a new project, it actually takes you to your actual uh, project folder. So up here, if I go back to home, it's going to list all my projects. So there's my new project uh, that I just created, 8 through 60 demo. Yeah. Project recently, uh, you know, created on recently. So I click on this, go back to my project. Here where we can upload files to our project. And also you can organize this. You know, if you're an organized person, you can create folders, whatever you want to call these, whatever makes sense to you. I guess I've used Arch already. You can upload your files in here, and I'll just create another one. That's a heck of it. So there's my folders. Now I go to upload. I can upload uh, files, folder, and assembly is more for Inventor. You can, you know, Inventor has assemblies. You can upload assemblies from Inventor. Then you can also upload from a Dropbox account. So I go to file. I'm just going to use these uh, default files that I have here. So I'll just start off with uh, there's a, that house right here is actually this model right here that I'm going to upload. So we'll select that. We'll select open. You know, give it its yeah, it's gonna go through the whole process of uploading this file. And while that's uploading, I'm gonna upload additional files. I have these PDFs and a DWG. Oh, yeah, those don't take as long. This one, so it's still discovering viewables, which means uh, besides just uploading the model of 3D view, if I have sheets on there, I'll include sheets. And I think I have a couple sheets. It's probably gonna take its uh, its a uh, time here to upload those sheets so I can view those. 
But uh, this is still uh, trying to discover any other viewables that I might have for this CAD file. But here's a, I mean, just a simple uh, PDF of a, of a sheet. If I click on that, I'm able to pull up the PDF. Uh, this is a PDF of this. So, I mean, I can, um, up here, I can, uh, you know, rotate this if I need to. If I have to, I can download this. I can print this. Let's see what this one says. Bookmark this. I don't have any sheets in here. We'll go this is my only sheet that I have. Zoom in, zoom out, fit to page. So you can view your uh, your DW, I mean, your, in this case, our PDF. And up here, as you notice, there's our file. It also keeps versioning. So if I was to print another PDF of this file and I've said I've made some changes, it's going to tag it with the new version. It's going to keep a list of all the versions on here that you might be working with. So right now, it's just our version one. Let's see, my DWG is uploaded. Let's see what comes up. So there's my DWG. Same thing, if I make any changes, save this, upload this again, it's going to tag this with the new version on here. So when I'm looking at this, here's some tools down here. You know, your, your typical pan, you're zooming it out, you have your camera interactions, you know, fit to view and so forth. You can uh, mark up. Controls are pretty much the same. Right now I'm just rolling my wheel to zoom in and out. If I push down on this, I can pan. Oops. I guess we'll let this, I must have hit something on my uh, mouse that I've made it go back. Let me go back to this, these fancy mice, other buttons. So let's get back to this. Uh, here's back to my CAD file. I mean, I can select, I can try clicking on objects on here. If I right click, this one doesn't give me any options besides show layer, clear selection. Um, comments and markups, I could add, um, comments to this, I can mark this up. So for example, I have comment on a point. So this gives me a comment over here, and if I click on something such as, for example, say I'm going to try to click on the store. Adds a point to that, I can add a comment to this, and I can type in whatever I need to add in here. So let's say, uh, move the door uh, four feet or something along those lines. Post. Okay, so that's going to have, so it's going to start tagging my uh, views on here. And, th and the thing with this is we have the ability to share this. So I can share this with someone else. If I click on this, I can share this where I can email, you know, an invite to someone else. I can also view this file and they can also have their comments on here. We can also do live review. Uh, live review, let's see if I can get this to come up with. But also it means if someone else logs in that's part of my team, uh, so please enter your name, start. So I can share this this uh, link with someone else. I can invite someone else. I can copy this uh, link, copy, and if I just go to my my emails are on the other on the other uh, screen here. So all I'm doing is I'm creating I'm creating an email. So I'm going to invite Lubo. Right, so he's going to have that link. He's going to pop up over here as well. So he, he'll be able to see me review this lifetime. Like I'll be able to add comments. He'll be able to see my comments that pop up. Uh, he's going to show up on here once he, if he decides to join this. Right. So from here, I can like, oh, you know, like I said, I can add more. Uh, what am I doing here? Selecting. Let's see if I can add some more things on here. Okay, that's just, just the link, I guess. But yeah, he would show up on here. We can comp. We, I mean, uh, I guess we can just message each other and kind of we can view this at the same time. All right, so it's all. So there's Lubo. He's joined. So Lubo took control. So he so he see he selected that uh, uh, that door right there. And I say he, okay, he's adding comments to it, or he's he's uh, zooming into that. I guess he can type in here and say, hey, you know, uh, we need to move this over, whatever ha happens to be the situation. All right, so this is a live review. So, I mean, you can invite as many as you want. You can join in here. And I guess if I start clicking, it'll say I'm taking control over this. And I can select this. Uh, it'll show up on his screen. The door needs to move. Uh, yeah, let's so see if he had a comment there that shows up on here. Uh, let's say I will move it. Okay, so it's all it's all live interaction right now, and then we can end this. You sure you want to end? Yes. So that's the end of that. Okay, so that's that's our live interaction. So otherwise, the other one is you know I invite him. He can also view this from his side. And he can add his comments, and they'll show up on this list right here. 
that keeps track of this. I don't think I can, oh, I can only delete mine, but if someone else uh, comments, I can't delete their comments on here. So it's just a view in a DWG. Let's go back to our project. And let's see if this uh, RBT files up. At least hopefully our 3D model. Okay, my three sheets are up, that's good. Now with this, um, I'll tell you right now, it's, it's, it's odd at times. Sometimes it's, it tends to take a while to upload every single view. You might see a little progress bar saying up here like one of something uh, that's been uploaded. And, uh, and sometimes it's just quick. Like right now, I just did this. Uh, I tried it earlier this morning, I was still thinking, but now that all my sheets are up. Uh, so when I click on this, so this is my view. I just have the 3D view, the default 3D view came in. So there's our model. Close that view right here. So same thing here, orbit, pan, uh, zoom in and out. You can uh, first person, you can walk, like you can uh, with uh, the Navis works. Uh, same thing, you can mark up, you can add comments. Uh, sections, you can explode this. Uh, you can turn on your properties so you can see what's going on over here. So if I select this, it bring, you know, pulls up the properties that you would see in your uh, Revit uh, property dialog box, you know, telling what kind of, this is your roof and so forth. Can't delete objects, I can, uh, I could, uh, let's see if I can right click, I can isolate, I can hide, uh, select it, so I can start hiding objects in here. Some ceilings in here. My uh, right click will start working a little better, so now we can see inside. And, uh, something just happened, just switched me back for some reason. So I will come back to this. So I'll probably reset, which is fine. I mean, if you were to hide something, if you right click, you can say show all objects, everything comes back. Uh, if I click on this little walk, all right, the orthographic set of view, set the orthographic to using wall switch perspective, that's fine. Click on this. You know, you set, you kind of set up, uh, set your points. You double click. It actually takes you uh, through the object. So from here, you kind of view. And you just click kind of where you want to go to. You single click, and that's going to take you over to that specific location. You hold down the mouse. So you can, you know, orbit the view. Pan up a little, a little short. So see if something's happening with this. Uh, this mouse just keeps jumping me back to that. This mouse is too high tech for me, it's probably what it is. So I'm here, I'm back again. So I mean in other words, what I'm trying to say is you can you can view your model, right? You can you can actually uh, uh, you bring in your model, you can view everything in here that you need to. Uh, you can uh, do sectioning, like you can do X plane. So there's my sections. I can section this model if I need to. Uh, you can change the different types of planes you want to add. So on here we have a, uh, so we had a Z plane instead. So you can kind of get you a, uh, put that around. Oh man, I don't know what something's happening. He's just jumping back. So, I mean, we're doing the sectioning. You also have this explode model. I don't know when you would use this, but it's pretty cool. You do this right here. I right, bring everything back. Same thing. You can add comments to this. You can pick a point. I can click on you know, something on here. Add a comment to this. Uh, you can post that and so forth. You, know, you have your markup tools up here, so you can have you know you can do rectangle. You can do uh, freehand, arrow, text, cloud. I'm doing this based off of the 3D view, uh, but I could actually go over here since I have sheets set up. I go to sheets, I can click on one of my sheets. So this pulls up the actual sheets that were in the Revit model. I can select the objects because it's, yeah, it's, it's 3D objects in here that I have. Or you know, even in AutoCAD, even though it's line where you can select that as well. Uh, you have the ability to, uh, same thing, add comments, just like we were doing on that uh, file. I can click on that. So Door. 
you have to, you also have measures. So it's just like one object, like the second object. So let me see that here. Let's see, uh, let's see what's it from uh, this object to this object. You know, it's roughly, I guess, I need to change my units. Uh, let's see where I need to go. Change my settings. Let's go back to this measure. Saw it earlier today. It did give me. Uh, here we go. Feet and fraction inches is probably what I want. You can change your position on there. So once again, select your object. Um, start. Select this. Select that. It gives me it's roughly seven feet. Reset. Come on. We'll pick in what I select, roughly seven one. So you make some measurements off of this. And this is just viewing our uh, sheets are part of this uh, uh, part of our, uh, our Revit model. All right, so back to that view. So here's our views and so forth. Once again, if you make any changes, you upload the file, it's going to tag this with a different versioning. It's going to keep track of all your versions on here. But uh, you can uh, you know, uh, you know, jump from one version to another if you need to. Now, if you were to delete the file or remove it from the actual uh, project, then all your, you know, this will no longer exist. You won't even have any versions left up here. So just, you know, there will be nothing on here of a uh, house RBT file. Now, even though, even though I'm in this view right here, you have this ability where you can share this. If I do share, so this comes up here. You can share uh, this specific view. You can do... Uh, uh, share this item with anyone who's using the following link. You can have the option where you can allow viewers to download it to their to their computer, so they can download this view, or in this case, this PD, uh, the sheet. Uh, they can download the model. In this case, be RBT. Uh, you can, you know, put a password on there, so you know, access uh, access uh, to your user and say, "Here's your password," and so forth. Or you can email this, send the link to someone else uh, via email. I haven't tried this embedded yet. Uh, I'm guessing I put this uh, find an email if I put a little image on there, you click on that. Like I said, I haven't tried that one, but if I do this one where I just copy this, copy, and I'll pull up. Uh, let's see, let's pull up a different tab up here. Paste that link on here. So like I say, you can send this to anyone, and this is uh, so what it sends to that user. Let's see if I can get this. It's updating. There we go. Send this to anyone. It's just a link. So I included the option. I didn't turn off the download, so they could download this file if they wanted to. If I click on that, see it's downloading my uh, house RBT file over here. Uh, so if I had disabled that, it doesn't even give them this option. Just gives them the option to view uh, the actual uh, model and any of the views that came with that. So in this case, here's my sheets. Uh, they can navigate through this, just kind of like I was doing earlier. They can do their sections. They can explode this. Uh, they can select objects, right-click, hide. So they don't even need to have Revit to view this or any of the other files. They just open it up in the browser, and they can just see what's going on in here. You right-click, you know, show all the other objects in here. So you can see what's going on. They can go to see any sheets that were included in there. So there's their sheets. So I just have some uh, elevations on there. So it's just, it's just viewing. I really can't uh, do anything else besides just viewing. Can I don't you know, I'll have, I'll have the access the ability to uh, comment on this or anything like that. It's just like here, uh, I'll take a look at what's going on with your project. And here you have it. Like I said, the, the user doesn't even have to have the product. It's just open up in a browser and they can view what uh, what's going on in here or what you have to show them. And then you're done, you just close that. That's the end of that. That's right there where you can share your files with someone else. Let's go back to our project. I do have other projects here um, that I have set up previously. You know, I've just kind of been working with this. Uh, like for example, this one that I we actually did this on April Fool's Day. As, uh, same project, but I, for this one, I should have different versions up here just to show you this. I click on this. Give it a second to think. See, there's my different versions that I've updated. I've been playing with this, uh, you know, April first version two, and then I guess a couple of days ago I started just uploading this and just making some changes. 
So once you know, I save this, upload this, it actually uh, pulls up uh, my different versions on here. So you can overview the previous version, you can promote this to the top version and so forth. Uh, but it will keep track of any time you upload or make any changes. And actually, this file, you want to take a look at a little something different. See this Revit, uh, this house RBT? See this says Cloud Revit Model? You might have noticed earlier, this one that I did a 360 demo, See the house just says Revit files. The difference between that other project and this one is the other project is using collaboration for Revit, uh, so which we'll, we'll cover next here, our next topic on here. Okay, so, so if you just upload a default Revit file, you upload it, it's just labeled uh, Revit files. This one up here that you'll, we'll do here in a second when we do our uh, collaboration for Revit, that's gonna say uh, Cloud Revit model, which means I've integrated a collaboration for Revit. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same project here. I'm going to move that into my Arch folder. So there we go. So all I did was just drag and drop, like just like you're moving files, and just drag and drop into the folders that you want to place that in here. DWG, and just organize this a little bit. All right, so let's move on. Actually, before you move on, let me show you some of the things on here. Uh, Admin. So when you, uh, we have admin uh, rights on here, so you have the uh, so you know your team name hub, whatever you want to you know call your team name. Uh, allow project contributors. In this case, we have our set to yes, which means I can invite anyone. They can uh, be contributors to my project. These are the non-paid uh, users. So I mean, you can invite as many as you want. Uh, they're limited to what they can do. Uh, team member invite mode. Uh, current mode is admin approval requires. So that means even though you're paid a user and you're a member of my team, if you invite someone, it still has to be approved by me, uh, the hub uh, admin on here. Uh, you could change this where you can say if a team member invites someone, then automatically give them access to whoever they invite. Uh, but we have our setup where, you know, if someone invites someone, I'm going to get an email saying, you know, this person's at, you know, been invited, do you want to approve the invitation and so forth. If I go to uh, members and roles, these are all the other people you know, we've done this with uh, you know, demoing. We've added them to our projects. Uh, they're deactivated. I can activate any of these previous users on here. Uh, so let me just go filter this out by instead of showing all, just show me uh, active. So these are all the active users we have. Um, there's, you know, there's Darren. He's a team member. There's, uh, there's, you have a, a team administrator for this. Uh, for this hub. Uh, this is my uh, using my personal email, so I'm a project contributor. Uh, there's Lubo, he's a team administrator. Uh, so I mean we, we could change, since we have you know team administrators, we can change each other's uh, permissions on here, but any other user like this one right here, when he first was invited he was just a project contributor. Any point in time I can change this and tell him, okay you're now a team member. Okay, so now you know he's a, he's a team member to my project uh, if I click on this again, I have the option that I could even make him a team administrator for the uh, for the project we're working on, or I can change his. I can take his uh, his uh, team membership away and just say you're just now a project contributor again. Or if I expand this, I have the ability to deactivate this user. You know, it's the end of the project. You know, we're gonna archive this. Anyone who's on here no longer needs to have access to this. I can deactivate uh, the user. So, right, and then even though he's been deactivated, I can always activate him again. You know, he happens to be, oh, we're going to be working on another project with this uh, user right here. We need to bring him on board. We can always activate this uh, this uh, user. Now, earlier, we are talking about projects. Like, here's all our projects. It'll list all your projects. You know, anything that's, you know, active, you know, you can always change this. You can archive this. You can manage the roles of uh, the users on here. Like, I only have one user, which is me. I haven't invited anyone to this. I'll invite people here in a second. Uh, and so it also lists all your projects. You can manage it from here. And I mean just subscriptions on here just says you have full access to 360 team. That's all it says on here. So I mean this is what you get uh, with the team. You have an admin uh, administrative page on here. You can you know administer your uh, projects and your users on, and whatnot. Now if I go back to my project. I go back to this let me invite some users. So I'm going to invite Lubo to my project. He's on there. I can invite additional people. All right, send an invitation. So what's going to happen is they're going to get an invitation. All right, 
So I guess since this is those who I am, uh, that shows me up here. So once Lubo accepts his invitation, he'll show up over here as my as a team uh, as a member. If I go to if I go down here to manage and view members, so right now I'm a contributor. For uh, this user is a contributor. So by default, when you first invite people, they're always contributors. If you need to go change them, you have to go to your um, um, to the admin role over there, find your user, and then you can have to change it to a project a team member. You want to make them a team member. By like I said, by default. First time they're invited, they're always going to be a contributor, even though you know they're here at, at, at our office. So you know they're part of the team already. But you always have to change this. Now, join requests. If I make him a team member, and this user invites someone else, if I go in here, I'm going to have alerts that's going to tell me I have a couple alerts I can go through here. If I go in here and I go to join requests, it would list people that have been invited that are, are waiting to uh, join the project. In that case. I can say approve, denied, and so forth. Now, the reason we can do that is if we go to a little hard to see, I mean, you might be able to see the little you know, gear wheel right here. There's three types of projects: there's open, there's closed, and there's secret. Uh, open is only for team members, which means anyone that's in your hub that's a team member, not a project contributor, can have access to this project. So what they can do is they can ask to join the project. So when they ask to join, they'll be listed on here, and I can approve, and they can join my project, and so forth. Uh, closed is only by invitation, and yeah, and uh, project contributors have access to a closed projects. So I can invite them to a closed project. I can't invite a project contributor to the open one. And then secret is by invitation only, and only members can see this project. Um, so right now, closed is the default that I have set this to. Give that a second. If I go back to home, and you see all my projects on here. Actually, if I go with that uh, shared with uh, by me, so there's closed. I can see this uh, project. Uh, these are by Lubo. He has an open, so that's a it means if I'm a team member, and right, I can click on this. I guess I'm already. Uh, I can. Uh, well, since I guess I'm an admin, I can have access to it. Uh, but he also has a secret project that I cannot see because I'm not. A, I wasn't invited to that project. So we create three projects on here. Close means I can invite project contributors on a team member, open, if I'm a team member, I can, re I can ask Lubu if I can join this project, and then the secret doesn't even show up because I'm not even part of that project. So only the secret uh, uh, project will be available to those that are uh, special enough to be working on that project. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. So let's go ahead and jump over to, uh, let's go back to PowerPoint here. This, so that's A360 team, and then we're going to integrate collaboration for Revit with A360 team as well. And actually, collaboration for Revit includes A360 team. Um, so if you were to opt for that service, A3, uh, collaboration for Revit, just keep in mind it does come with uh, A360 team as well. So what is collaboration for Revit? Um, it's cloud work sharing. All right, so we just look here at the image. Here's our cloud. We can connect different uh, all these other firms. So you have cloud work sharing. You can uh, multi form uh, multi firm uh, concurrent authoring. So you said you can uh, you'll host a project in the cloud. You can invite other firms to work on that project. It can be consultants. It can be you know, other offices that you might have. And what they're going to do is they're going to actually um, log in to their account on. A, I'll show you once we get through the whole setup in Revit. And then if they have permission to join the team, the, the project, they're going to have a little icon where they can go open up that file. And it's going to create it's going to create a local file all in cache. And your central file is hosted in the cloud. So like I said, as long as you have internet connection, you can, uh, you'll can you be able to access. Uh, and as long as you have Revit on your machine, you'll be able to access uh, the projects as long as you have permission to access that. No IT setup is required. That means they don't have to have, a, have an IT in, in place to set this up. I can, uh, as long as I have collaboration for Revit, I have internet connection, and I host a project on my A360, I can invite another user that has collaboration for Revit, and he'll be able to access my project. And we'll be able to work uh, you know, together on that, uh, on that project. It doesn't have to be anywhere specific. Like I said, it can be anywhere as long as you have internet, uh, internet connection. Like I could be at home, and he can be you know, somewhere else, somewhere on a beach with the internet and so forth. So you don't need a, um, you know, IT to set this up for you. You have direct access to other cloud services. So if you're already using, um, you know, rendering in the cloud, same concept. You just, you know, you, 
you still have access to that. So if you're, you know, even though you have collaboration files set up, you can still push that to, you know, A360 cloud rendering and rendering your images and so forth. And with that said, let's do the collaboration for Revit uh, product demonstration. So we'll come back to this here. And what we're going to do is, let me go to my Revit. So that's the same project we've been uh, working on, uh, the little house. And it does, it's not set up with work sharing yet. It's just a standalone project. Yeah, I can just probably start this from scratch. Just so you can see this view. Okay, that's the last one. I don't know what changes in it, but let's go ahead and save that. So we're going to open our project. This is so you can see this is just a standalone uh, project. There's uh, there's no work sharing enabled or anything like that yet. If you're setting this up, uh, depending on which version of Revit you're using right now, I'm still using 16. Uh, you actually have to go and download the collaboration for Revit uh, 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 plugin that you'd have to install in Revit. Uh, if you're using 17 already, it's already integrated, so it's already there for you. Uh, so in this case, like I said, we're using 16, so before that I had to go and download the, you know, collaboration for Revit install and install this on, uh, install this, uh, so it'll show up on my Revit. So um, just to show you how the process works, under the Collaborate tab, your uh, ribbon's going to look a little different. Uh, before, you didn't have this Collaborate right here. You just had the work set, and you didn't have this communicator and so forth. Uh, so it's pretty much from here on over. And this was active, this work sets. Well, now this time around, when you do this uh, setup, collaborate. And if you haven't saved your file, it's going to ask you to save your file first. So this file's already saved. It's just skipping that, uh, that part right there. So you have a couple options here now. Collaborate within your network. This is the, this is the traditional work sharing where you would set up this in your, uh, the central file on your server, and then all your users here in the office would create their local file. Well, now this time, we're going to switch over and do collaborate using A360. All right, so that little icon shows up. So now we're going to host this file. The central file is going to be hosted on our uh, somewhere on the cloud on A360. All right. See, so it says on here a copy of the model will become work share and updated to A360. The original model will remain as a backup. So even though I'm about to enable this work sharing, that that uh, default file that I just opened, it will still remain a stand, just a standalone project. It won't have any work sharing enabled. So I'll click OK, and that's going to ask, uh, you know, here's my current uh, Revit model. I can change the name if I want to, so let me just put uh, my initials since I have that other one. So these A360 projects, I do recall those. Those are the same ones listed right here. So you, can, you would pick and choose which uh, A360 project um, you're going to uh, assign the, this uh, model to. So I'm going to select my demo, the one I created today. So I'll say initiate. I hope it didn't take this uh, that long. So it's going to go through this process, and you'll see it here in a second. The uh, dialog box is going to change. So starting work sharing, creating default work sets. So now it's uploading the model to A360. <clears throat> and then the next step, it's going to save this model's local cache. So in other words, this will become my local file, and you won't find this under my documents. Like you're used to uh, by default, where you, you know, set up a local file and it goes to my documents. So it's all just saved in memory. So yeah, once I shut this down, I said I'm going to go find that file. It's like, I won't be able to pull it up from uh, any local uh, lo uh, location that I might have. So let's see. It doesn't take this long. And what's going to happen is when this goes through, it's going to upload that uh, Revit file into this folder, and it's only going to be the first. Uh, um, 
or say it's like the first version of the file. So when once I upload this, it saves the file, it saves a copy of the file in here. Anytime I synchronize, it does not update the file that's going to be found in this uh, in this project right here. For that, we have to do a special uh, uh, command called publish for use state 360. We want to keep updating this file. So let's see. This is still thinking. I said also, if you have any questions, remember there's a chat window down at the bottom, or feel free to email us, um, and we'll get to those questions. Of the project. Okay, it still hasn't shown up yet. It's probably being published. Uh, well, I'm here, I guess, uh, as you can see, Lubo has joined uh, the project over here. I sent him an invitation. So, yeah, Lubo is a member. So that's why he, by default, just came in as a member. And I could make him an admin for this project if I, if I need to. Come on, it's still thinking. Oops. App. Oh, maybe we're using up all the bandwidth with this uh, webinar meeting. I'm having a hard time pushing this up there. And it's not that big of a file, it's only like a couple of megabytes. It's actually eight megabytes. But I said uh, we are on this webinar, so it's uh we are on the using the bandwidth, so maybe that's why I'm just taking a sweet time. Ah, oh, there we go, there we go. It's starting to do something. There we go. So it's uploading. Now it's saving uh, my model to a uh, local cache. <clears throat> so now I go back to this. So there's the file. So that's been uploaded to my uh, team right here. So now as you can see, instead of having uh, like this one, Revit files, the type, this one now is showing that it's a cloud Revit model. So this is recently added to me. Once you, this is uploaded, uh, this little icon right here allows you to share this. If you want to share this, uh, the model just like I did earlier, you can download this if you want. You can move this or delete it from here. This is saving to my local cache. And we should go to now since uh on this project Lubo's part of my uh he's a team member on here, he should have access to uh this file now. Uh from his uh from his uh Revit where he might be located. Go through. Any minute now. I want to cancel it yet. It's we're almost there. Two out of three. All right. Hey, we did it. 
Yeah, successfully initiated collaboration using 8360. It has been uploaded to 8360 team, the project right here. And I collaborate on this model with your team, uh, uh, project team. As I said, now this is all just uh, saved on cache, so I can just continue to work from here. So uh, just a couple of things. Communicator. <clears throat> But where did it come? If it comes up, that's for some reason it's. Uh, where's my communicator? Uh, it's over here on this other screen. So I mean, once Lubo joins, uh, sets up his uh, his uh, file as well, you know, he'll show up in a green uh, dot right here, and we can, uh, you know, actually uh, we can also chat. Just, you know, we can uh, take screenshots of anything that we have in here, um, snapshots of this, and just upload it, make comments, and so forth. And pretty much right now, this is a local file that's synchronized to my central file somewhere in the cloud, just like it would be here in the in the office. And then same thing, Lubo will join when he ever joins, and then we'll just be working back and forth, like, like say, like we were just sitting right next to each other. Uh, one thing I want to show you with this, let me close this. So let me just synchronize up here. So everything should look the same. Here's your save to local. Here's your synchronize. Uh, this came up on the other screen. I'm going to drag this over here so you can see this. So there it is. Central model location 8360. There's the 8360 demo. Here's the file name. So I'm just going to synchronize this. There we go. Let me just close this project. Now, one thing that I want you to notice, if you're using the recent files to open up files, so here's the default house. Here's the one I just created, and here's another one I was working with. Might be a little hard to see, but you see this little icon that shows in the bottom right corner? That right there tells you it's a collaboration for a Revit file. It has a little, uh, the little A360 symbol, and it has A360 next to that. Now, forget that this is all listed here. Pretend it's not on here, and just like, I invite someone to work on this project with me. Um, they have access to everything. So what they would do is they were going to go to open, and now what's going to happen is at the very top up here of this, uh, this uh, uh, scroll bar over here is this icon A360. If they click on this, it would list any projects that they have access to. Okay, so it would list. It would give you a list of all the projects that you have access to. In this case, you know, there's A360 demo right here. Pretend I'm a different user. So I'll open that. There's the file, and this is when I select this is going to be our central. This is the central file, so it doesn't do anything over here where it says, you know, I can detach this, I can create a new local. It's automatically going to turn this into a a, a local file all in cache memory. So now I open this. So I have to open this. So that's going to be the same thing that any other user will see. So in this case, like I said, if Lubo decides to create that uh, work on this project, he goes through the same process. He just selects the file, opens that, and this is our file that's all saved in the uh, cache memory. And like I said, you just continue to work. I think uh, my communicator is probably turned up. So see there, Lubo joined the project. Uh, let me go to my floor plan. Let's see if, uh, hey, Lubo, uh, if you can hear me, can you select that door right there? I guess I can turn uh, my work sets, owners. All right, so there it is. So there's, just just make sure, see what color, what color my, what color is Lubo. All right, so Lubo's that green, I'm this purple. Okay, so Lubo selected that door just like you would before. You select this, if I try to modify this, give it a second, and then come back and say, oh, Lubo has access to this. I'm going to have to replace the request in order to modify that. Okay, so you selected that wall as well. So as you're working in here, it keeps track of everything just like it, it normally would. So just you know, flipping that door around. If we have a communicator turned on, so like, see, you said done. And I'll be like, uh, let's see, if I go back to this communicator and say, hey. So I just said flip the door and sync. So if he flips the door, and he'll sync, and then I'll sync after him. And uh, you know everything should uh, change. Now while he's doing that, 
earlier I told you when you went to this uh, team and there's that file, it's only the first, if I was to open this, you'll see the model just as it was right before we did the, the whole synchronizing, you know, with the views and if it includes any sheets and so forth. Now, we, as we start making changes, this is not going to actually update it. There's, a, you know, this central file is being saved somewhere else on this A360, and this is just kind of like a copy of that. So as you're working, as you're working on here, let me go ahead and synchronize this. So there, he moved the door. All right, so let me turn this off right here. Display settings. So as you're working on this, you have up here that you see is manage models. You have views for A360, and then it, so if I close, go to views for A360, I can pick and choose what views I want to publish to my A360, uh, A360 uh, file, which is this one right here. So if I was going to share this with you know, a consultant or maybe an owner, and I don't care for him to see every single, uh, you know, sheet on here that I have, every single view, I can pick and choose, you know, what I want to share with him. So in this case, I can say, like, oh, I just want to include, uh, let's just include a default 3D view. Let's include those, uh, you know, I already have those sheets, but let's say I decide, oh, I want to just go ahead and throw in the default uh, floor plan over here as well. And sure, why not throw in the ceiling plan? So I can uh, save and close. So when I save and close, you know, I go back to that, and so it says, you know, this is my first set right here. So it's just whatever the views that I picked is what's saved. That's going to actually publish to my model on A360 team. And then when I go to manage models, so this is the projects you would have access to. So there's our A360 uh, demo. So if I select this, there's that file right here. So it says only through this project are listed below. You know, you want access to all files within, go to A360. So then here's the option where I can publish the latest uh, action. It says I can rename, relinquish, uh, view versions. I can delete this. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish the latest. So it says, you know, you may close this window during publishing. Status will change to publish when complete. So right now this though it moves up and down. It's going to turn, uh, it'll give me a little green symbol once this has been published. I mean, you can leave this up if you want, or you can just continue to work. And what that's doing is updating the file on A360, uh, this file right here. So next time I go, it should include, uh, if I open this up, it should include additional uh, uh, views. So let's see. Didn't take too long. And if I go over here to show things manage, actually not manage. If I go to insert link, I was going to link in another Revit model, for example. Not that I have one, but just to show you. Let's see, let's wait for this to come up. Let's say I'm a consultant and I would, and I needed I needed a you know link in this architectural model into my uh, structural model. So I'm making this do too much. Okay, so there it came up. I just kind of canceled it. It was a real quick dialog box saying everything's being published. And then what did I do? Still thinking. So let's go ahead and while that's thinking, I go to this. So six minutes ago, that's actually, I'm just, I tend to go back to this, and I go back to this, it refreshes. Uh, so there it goes. A minute ago, I published this. If I click on this, hopefully it, it published everything. Now you might get something up here that says it's still, you know, uh, uploading files. And there, as you can see on here, there's version two, because I just published uh, something to this file, which was additional views. Now when I go to this, uh, it's still thinking. So I included uh, I included uh, the floor plan and the and the ceiling plan. So what we'll do it's going to actually show up under views and then your sheets. And just to show you, I have I have another the other project that I was working with earlier. 
see this Revit Cloud model as well. So I click on this. This is probably still uploading. See, when I go to views, I have three views now. When I click on this, so it'll show me the 3D view that I included, but I also included uh, the floor level of my view. So that's what I see right now. And then uh, along with that, whatever, any sheets that, uh, that were included as well. Yeah, so when you include views besides the sheets, they'll be listed under your views, 3D view, and then anything else you might include, sections, elevations, whatever you want. So when you share this, you know, people will be able to see this. They'll, you know, they'll see the views you included in the sheets. So let me go back to this and see who's probably still thinking on here. Yeah, so down here is a little green bar. And it's, still, it's still uploading something, so that's why. Well, actually, I guess it's uploading this view. But see, it only includes one view so far in the three sheets, so it still needs to include the other two views that I have. So, we'll, you know, we'll just let it take its uh, time that it needs to and so forth. But besides that, this is collaboration for Revit. You're pretty much just setting up a, I think my thing froze here, but you're setting up a central file that's on somewhere on A360. If I say somewhere, I mean it's, even though this is, this shows you the model, this is not the actual central file. It's you know, somewhere else that I don't even know how to get access to. Uh, but it's being stored, that's your central file. Then any user that's been invited can then uh, create a local file that's all saved in memory. You know, just like you're used to working, you work, you synchronize, it updates the files. Um, you know, you, you have, if you select something that's being accessed by someone else, you know, it prompts you and tells you, hey, you don't have ownership for this, as you know, place a request and so forth. Uh, I was going to show you earlier, we come back to the importing Revit uh, link uh, RVTs and so forth. You also have this external, uh, as I say, external resource. Let's say I'm a consultant, I have access to your project. So I do external resource, I select this A360, I click open. So that's the project that I have access to. So when I select this project, open that, you know, there's other, you know, let's say that, in this case, I guess since I have this file open, I say there's a, I'm the architect now and I have the structural model, I can select and I can link this into here. So you can be working all, you know, uh, concurrently with the collaboration for Revit. That's pretty much it for this collaboration for Revit. Now, last thing I want to show you, if we go back to the PowerPoint, is this collaboration with Navisworks. Uh, the tool that I'm going to show you is this Clash Detective. Uh, there's uh, two versions of Navisworks. There's Simulate and there's Manage. This is the difference between the two versions, Clash Detective. Uh, so what we can do here is, uh, we can run clashes with one model versus another. Uh, spec uh, specify specific objects you want to run a clash against. See if there's any issues that we might find uh, in our models. You know, hopefully you can catch those before you're actually out there building and so forth. You know, so like it says on here, helps anticipate uh, problems and whatnot. So uh, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into Navisworks and I'm going to do a quick demonstration of uh, the clash detective. So I already have this. Uh, Navisworks running up here. So for Navisworks, it's uh, it's a viewer. There's no modeling done in here. You're just bringing in existing models already. So these are all our Revit models that we that uh, that are brought in here and combined them all into uh, into one. So I mean, I have the architectural model. I mean, let me hide this so you can see that I have. There's a structural model. There's my structural model. And then there's my MEP model. If I had to make any changes, like if someone said, hey, uh, make sure you uh, move this toilet over, you know, six inches, then I have to go back to the original file and make my changes and then, you know, bring this back in here and so forth. Uh, even though I can select objects and I can move them around, um, it does not affect the original model. Okay, it doesn't get pushed back to the Revit models. Like all of a sudden, you know, toilet moved over. It's like, no, nope, doesn't, it won't do anything like that. Like I said, there's no modeling in here, just pretty much viewing the models that, uh, that, have been, uh, that have been combined in here. So like I said, I have all the architecture, MEP, and structural all combined into one. So there's my three, uh, my three files. And just like any other program, kind of like I was doing in that uh, A360, here's my walk. So I mean, I can navigate through, uh, through the projects. For some reason, I have some floating outlets in there. 
yeah, I can look around. So there seems like yeah, there's an issue right there. Just by looking at the model, we haven't even ran a uh, class yet. Uh, some things you could do with this, I go to review, and actually I go to draw. I can mark this up, and it creates a view for me over here. Uh, you can right-click and rename this cause, whatever you want. Uh, since I moved, if I click back on that, it saves that. I can add a tag with the comment uh, if I need to. Oops. Wrong direction. Uh, my comment box is over here on the second screen, all right? I'll look into this. So, I mean, if I continue to navigate, yeah, I can manually look, try to see if I can find any other issues. Like, oh, that's going through the wall if I need to do that, or I mean, we can ignore that for now. But anytime I come back to a specific view, I mean, that shows up down here. I have comments. This comes up, and it just says, you know, the comment, the time, date, the author. It's based on my uh, user uh, name, the name of the the number of the comment, and so forth. But instead, what we're going to do here is actually have a couple views set up that are uh, pre-saved. So I have like this, you know, there's my arch, there's my MEP where I just want to see my MEP model. I just want to see structural. I have a combination of structural and MEP. Just when we do a coordination test, this is just going to be easier uh, to view instead of having everything uh, like walls and ceilings and whatnot that might be covering this. So what I'm going to do over here, this is, like I said, this is the difference between uh, simulate and uh, manage, is this right here. And this is where you need a big screen so you can, uh, so you can uh, work with this e uh, more easily. So uh, one thing that I did beforehand, before I do this, I created what I call selection sets. So that means I, I chose objects that I wanted to group together. For example, I, if I select this, this is all my ducts. I have my mechanical equipment and then I have pipes. So even though this came, this is all part of the same file, the MEP file, you can break this down into whatever selection sets works for you. Um, you know, whatever makes sense to you. That maybe you have multi-level building, you might say, oh, I'm all, you know, I want to create a selection set where all of my ducks on level one, you know, all my ducks on level two. So when we do these uh, these tests, you know, it's more of a manageable size rather than you know, one model versus another. It comes back with oh, you have 5,000 clashes. All right, so we can do you know like oh, let's see how many clashes we have on level one and so forth. So luckily enough, this is just a one single level building. So what I'm going to do here is I have three tests, but I'm actually going to delete these. Delete all those tests. We're going to create a brand new test. If I click on this, there are currently no clash tests defined. That's fine. We're going to add a test. You can call this test whatever you want to call it. I mean, I can you know be very specific and say, or not that specific, say structure versus MEP. And then down here, um, so a couple of rules, you know, you can ignore clashes between items of the same layer, items of the same group, and so forth. Like right now, I have everything unchecked. And I have this set up where you have section A, section B, and it's just showing me the models right now. So this is, uh, so this since this is uh, grayed out, that means it's hidden, that's my arch model. So what we can do here is I can select uh, MEP on this side, structure on this side, I mean vice versa, you can do structural MEP and so forth. Uh, it's going to do solids or surfaces, you can do lines, you can do points, uh, self-intersect and so forth. You can manually uh, pick objects from your screen over here right, and say I'm going to include those instead of having the entire model. So you can pick and choose. I'm just running a hard test so there's no tolerance, so anything that you know touches, you know, come back with the clash. So I'll run this test, and it comes back with, oh, we got quite a few uh, clashes. Let's see how many I have. So 397 clashes uh, just based on, you know, model versus model, right? I just did MEP versus structure. So I select this. Uh, there's my first clash. Highlights my objects. I mean, a couple things you can do over here. You can do uh, dim other, so it dims everything in the background, just leaving your objects, or you can you know, hide everything, just show you where the objects are clashing. Uh, yeah, that's transparent dimming, this is just you know solid, no transparent dimming, and whatever, whatever uh, works for you. You can orbit around, and when you do this, it always saves this, uh, the location that you orbit around. 
uh, or the view that you set up. You know, if it's something that's hard to see, you might have to orbit and move your mouse around or your view around. It'll, it'll keep that. It'll save that uh, that setup. So there's our first clash uh, status set to new. You can say it's active. You can say it's been reviewed. It's been approved. It's been resolved. Um, so these are Revit models. It tells me what level came from. The has grids. It tells me the grid intersection. You know, found. Uh, where did I scroll over too far? Too far. You know, the data was found. If I approve it, it gives me, you know, put my name on there. I could actually assign this. Um, I want to let me assign this. Oh, I probably need to click over here. Uh, for some reason, that's grayed out, but I should be able to assign this to. I just sent to a different class and come back to this guy. There we go. I can assign this to a specific, uh, you know, I can say. Or my MEPS, and I say, uh, look into this. All right, so you can assign this. Now, if you click on an object, uh, it's like this where you need a big screen. I'm going to pull this up here. Click on the, you know, your clash will tell you what's the object that's, you know, from the mechanical uh, that's clashing, what's the object on the structural that's clashing. What you could also do is if I, you know, you right click one of these objects, let's say this, uh, this beam, for example. I can say group clashes involving item. So that means it's going to find any other objects that are uh, clashing with that beam. If I did the beam, I could have done this uh, unit because you know, I just came back like, oh, that's only the, the only clash involving. So what it does, it creates a new group over here. You can rename the group, you know, call it whatever you want, uh, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to group all the clashes that involve that object. So I see there's that you know, beam clashes with that type over there as well. Try something inside. No, it's this pipe right here. That pipe right there. That's probably the other pipe that's causing that clash. And so, I mean, like I said, it'll come back and get yeah, any clash that it finds that, you know, that has zero tolerance and it's structural versus MEP. It doesn't care for anything else. Like, for example, this is going into the slab. Uh, so, you know, like, oh, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. So, what I could do is I can say it's been approved. If I do resolved and I run the clash, the test again, it's going to come back as a new clash because they'll tell you that no, it hasn't been resolved. So I'll say that's been approved. All right. I'll just click some of these. Now if you were to run this test again, see this one, it's like, oh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's go ahead and right click. Let's run the test again. You get a different color now. Instead of new, but, you know, clash is being ready, you get this active, which means you already ran this test once. These are still your active clashes. Anything that's been approved stays as approved. Um, if something new came up, let's say you know you got an updated model, and let's say they put another uh, mechanical box in here, and hits that, it come back. It's like okay, these are all your active clashes. This is your new clash, and so forth. So let me add additional uh, additional uh, test over here. Let's add another one. So before, what I could do also. So the standards are set for one model versus you know model versus model, or uh, you know you can expand the tree and select you know, certain objects from here versus whatever you want. We also have sets for how I created the ducts, the ducts, uh, mechanical equipment and pipes. I can do ducts and mechanical equipment versus my structure. Run test. Right, in this case, it's just based on whatever I on the selection test of my structure. It comes back. It's like oh yeah, 115 clashes, just based on those objects. So there's that, there's that beam running through that. So we we'll go through here and find out. Okay, zoom in close to get a better view. Yeah, there's that duck versus that. Okay, so this is just running your clash. Now let me create another test. Set. Even though these sets are from the same model, they're from my MEP. I can run ducks versus pipes, even though it's just my MEP model. Uh, it doesn't like I said, it doesn't matter. You can Pick and choose what kind of you know test you want to run here. So it's the text of my MEP versus the pipes of my MEP. I'll say I'll run test. It's come gonna come back and say, okay, you have yeah, duck right there. Same same situation right here. You have that pipe running through that. And who knows, man, that's what it's supposed to do, right? I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's correct. I'm just looking at this thing, it's all wrong. But so we have this situation. Right there, there we go. 
any of these, you can always, you always have the ability to come back to the review and you can uh, mark it up, you can add a you know, tag to this. All right, and then uh, it comes up with your uh, comment box. It's on my other screen. Looks wrong. I mean, whatever you want to comment, you want to add in here. Okay, so as you go through this, you, know, you go through here and you say this, you know, like I said, some things might not be an issue. So that's where you can say this has been approved or it's been reviewed. You know, we don't have to worry about that. Let's see if we can get the, the good view that we need. There we go. Okay. So we can kind of see it there. Same thing over here. You can group this. We can say this, you know, this pipe or this duct, you know, group any clashes involving this item and so forth. Now, once we have this, I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. I guess it's starting to. I guess it's starting to be a lag in here, but it's all right. So we ran our tests. Now we have all these tests over here. Now the next thing we can do with our test is we can create a report. So the report uh, here's the contents that it includes right now. Pretty much, I have everything checked. All right, and you know, what kind of tests you want to include? You want to include all the new um, clashes you have. You want to include anything that's active. Do you want to include what's been reviewed? You know, the, right here, the reviewed, approved resolved and then down here you have the option which test you want to do you want to do the current test that you're working on you want to do all tests combined all tests separate the file format you know HTML XML HTML tabular text viewpoints I'll just do tabular for this and I'm just doing the current test which is this test number two so when I write report let's just, yeah, let's just put it on the Let's create a new folder right here. There's my test. This is test two. So we'll let this do its thing. It's write its report. That should be written. So what I'm going to do is if I go over here pull this up. I did it on my desktop. So these, uh, this folder right here, these are all the images of your clashes. So if you're going to send this, you better send, uh, to send this to someone, make sure you include that folder so otherwise when they open this uh, HTML file, so we'll just have little X's right here where you have all your uh, images. So like I said, here's our report based on the clashes. Um, you know, your element, item one, item two, if you click on this, it actually gives you an enlarge, so you can see on here. If you, uh, if you by chance, I created a comment over here, so it says comments. So the number two is not going to show me anything on there, but like I said, if I look down the line over here, there's my comment, I just said it looks wrong. But here's your report, so you can go through this, you know, send this to anyone who's working on your teams. Like, hey, these are the issues we ran into. Uh, you know, you need to take a look at this and see if you can uh, fix this on the actual model and so forth. There we go. All right, so that's writing a report. So, like I said, Clash Detective. You pretty much um, just to recap this. You set up your tests. You pick and choose where you want to run a test, you know, side A versus side B. You pick your tolerance. I just did in this case 0, 0, ran the test, and it comes back with results. You just have to go through your results and find out what the issues are. Uh, either, you know, this is a real issue, it's been approved, this, you know, we can ignore that. The only way you can fix this is you have to go back to the original file, make your adjustments. You can bring this back in here, where we run the test, and it'll come back with if something's been fixed. Let's say I'll cheat here a little bit. It'll probably give me something. It'll probably give me some other error. So I'm just moving that object down. Like I said, it's not going to affect my original file. So this comes back. See a little delta saying here something's been changed. So I'm going to say I'm going to run this test. So now if we look at this, it says resolved. There's two. So remember, orange means it's still active. So down here at the very bottom. There's my resolve, so there's that, it thinks it's been resolved because I've moved it, it's no longer clashing, so that was another object it was clashing with. 
but of course when I get an updated model and this thing is going to be back in place, I, I can reset this. Uh, reset, transform, so it's back up here. So every time we get updated model, I decide I'm going to run the test again. It comes back as new uh, as new uh, clashes because it's picking up like oh it, it was fixed at one point in time, but now this is a brand new clash. That's why these show up in red, and then these are still active. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Um, just a quick uh, recap. Where's my PowerPoint? I guess it just says uh, thank you on here. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, it says thank you. Let's go to the top. So we covered A360 team, A360 collaboration for Revit, and then Navisworks uh, managed the Clash Detective. So um, gives you any questions? Uh, I don't know. If I, I don't think I can hear anyone, but I don't know if Lou can hear anyone or if there's anything in the chat. Uh, otherwise, feel free to email us. Here's our email addresses. You know, shoot us an email. Let us know what you think. Um, if you need to see something more, you know, we can do one-on-one -on -one demos. We have to. That's not a problem. And we can just uh, next time show you what else. You know, uh, show you more with A360 team collaboration and Navisworks uh, Clash Detective. Otherwise, I think that's all I have. Yeah, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.